Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title today, we are talking about the latest Celine collection. Now, I thought we'd split up this video and we talk about the five major themes behind this collection as well as five picks that I'm looking forward to seeing when they drop in stores this coming fall. These are the things I liked as well as what I did not like about this collection. So the first theme, which is in the name itself, this is the Triumph collection, obviously in reference to the Arc de Triomphe. I've talked about this multiple times on my channel, but if you aren't familiar, Celine Vipiana's car broke down at the Arc de Triomphe where she noticed the chain link pattern and really loved the design of that and decided to make that the logo of her brand. If you aren't familiar, this is the story of how this came to be. And the Triomphe logo was something that we saw obviously throughout the time of the finder, but even during the Michael Kors era when Phoebe Philo was the creative director, however, she did not use this logo. Phoebe Philo is not really a logo heavy designer. But then when Eddie Slamon took over the brand in 2018, this became one of those key defining elements for this era. Going back into the archives is obviously very much a part of the history of this brand. If you haven't seen any of these collections, Celine likes to go into these monumental Parisian landmarks. Last season it was the National Library. This is obviously so intertwined with the history of Celine as well as defining of the Eddie Slamon era. So the second theme with this collection was the 60s. So I'm just going to read this quote here, the collection looks back at the 1960s, the golden age of Celine, recapturing the origins and the spirit of the house with the two-piece coordinates, looks, and authentic reweaved materials. The ready-to-wear is combined with handmade embroidered couture pieces. The felt caps are a 60s transposition of the Celine classic baseball cap. And I did a whole video on the history of Celine, so I'll link that in the description box below. This is kind of referred to as the golden age of Celine because this was when the brand transitioned from being what was mainly a children's made-to-measure shoe company to a full-on women's wear brand, primarily women's sportswear, expanding to accessories. Obviously, there's a lot of inspiration. It is so felt when we look at the silhouettes, that kind of 60s mod look, or the style of the yeah yeah musicians. When I think about brands like Mary Quant, Courage, when I think about figures like Twiggy, and of course, Audrey Hepburn, which we'll talk about in just a moment, but just in terms of the clothing, we obviously have these mini skirts, these short skirts, these short dresses, these knee-high boots. During the 60s, this was sort of a symbol of liberation and rebellion for many women in the 60s when you just compare it to silhouettes in the 1950s. We're seeing these shift dresses, these simple A-line dresses, very clean lines. We're also seeing these go-go boots, these knee-high white leather boots boots became very iconic for that period. We're also seeing these Mary Jane shoes very popular during that period as well as these very bold accessories, very statement sunglasses, these very structured handbags and of course these hats are just so defining of that era. And when you look at some of Eddie Slamon's past work you definitely see even at his days at YSL the 60s there was a touch of that but I feel like this has got to be the most obvious reference to that period and we'll talk about why I think that is, why they're doing that as a brand, because I think it's a very interesting choice that we haven't really seen the brand go into this territory, but I think this theme of the 60s, it's a very strategic move. The next major theme, as I mentioned earlier, is Audrey Hepburn. I've done a whole video on Audrey Hepburn and I'm totally plugging my channel, but because I've already made a lot of these points in greater deep dive, so I'll link everything in the description box below, but we are definitely seeing a reference to Audrey Hepburn. Back Back in the day, Audrey Hepburn in the 50s and 60s, but mainly in the 50s when she started her career, her look was actually very modern for the time. When you even look at how women dressed in the 50s, very extremely feminine quotations versus how she dressed, what was sort of the standard of beauty back in the day, Audrey Hepburn wasn't really what the standard of beauty, at least for that time in the 1950s when she started out. And of course she became an icon in her own right because she was so unique and different. Check out my video on Audrey Hepburn. Key very obvious references to Audrey Hepburn. We're seeing a lot of the 
little black dress, the LBD moments here. Obviously think of her breakfast at Tiffany's. She wore that famous Givenchy dress, which kind of became that symbol of chic simplicity, very quintessential Audrey Hepburn. We're obviously seeing that here. We're also seeing tailored silhouettes. Audrey Hepburn really favored clean lines and well-tailored clothing that accentuated her frame. She wore fitted tops, very slim cut pants or skirts. By the way, we're not seeing any pants in this collection, which is a very interesting move. The idea of closely tailored clothing obviously is also very much in line with some of the work that Eddie Slimane has done in previous design houses as well. Another aspect of Audrey Hepburn's style are these statement accessories. While she was very known for her very simple black dresses, understated clothing, she would make a statement with her accessories, be it the oversized sunglasses, elegant scarves, to these statement hats. They really complemented her outfits and added sort of an interesting flair. And then another aspect in terms of like the styling, I think like the hair, the beauty, the classic updos, the makeup, very very Audrey Hepburn here. And of course I felt like there were some nods to Givenchy. And I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I saw like a lot of these sort of Audrey Hepburn-esque looks and by association <laughs> Givenchy, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, are they gonna put Eddie Slimane at Givenchy? Is this that show that is going to like, transition him to Givenchy? Givenchy does not have an existing creative director, at least that has been announced yet. Their last collection was done by the design team. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, is that that? And I don't know about you guys, but I get annoyed when these big corporations do this, they just throw designers wherever. Personally, I just find that annoying, but I don't think that they're gonna put Eddie Slimane at Givenchy. I don't know, they could. Why I don't think at least the timelines that have been talked about with this collection, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't know, I could be wrong though. No one could have predicted right after Phoebe Philo, Eddie Slimane would have been taking over Celine. While I could see them doing it, I just, I hope they don't do it. Eddie Slimane met his five year mark last year. Celine has been doing really well. You read any of the LVMH financial reports, they're always mentioned in a very positive light. I don't think they're gonna change anything unless they're like, oh my gosh, only Eddie can fix Givenchy. Nobody seems to be able to do that, but I don't think they're gonna do this. Just stick with me. But the fourth point I wanted to make about this collection, this was a tribute to Richard Abaddon. He was a very influential photographer who's had a career that has spanned decades. You've definitely seen his work. He has this very distinctive style that is very much characterized by like a more cleaner composition, very striking compositions. A lot of his work really does capture those spontaneous moments and emotions. But Eddie Slamont has referred to him as a mentor and Eddie Slamont is actually a photographer. He likes to photograph musicians. Very notably, Eddie Slamont worked with Richard Avedon during his time at Dior. There's this very out of this world kind of vibe to them. When I think about some of the Jill Sander in the 90s, is photography, that kind of feeling and we saw with these Dior images. And of course, Richard Avedon famously photographed Audrey Hepburn on numerous occasions. And the final theme that I want to talk about and it is why I think Eddie Slimane is going to be staying at Celine, although I could be wrong, but they have announced that Celine is going to start by dropping beauty. LVMH has really had this desire to transform Celine from being strictly what Phoebe Philo had made it this women's wear handbags and accessories type of line to something greater. Celine has really ventured into menswear, fragrances, but now they want to venture into beauty. I also noticed there was a new fragrance, Zuzu, perhaps named after the famous French actress. But with the brand, there's always a lot of references to Paris in the 60s. It just always goes back to this period, this golden era. And with a lot of Celine Runway collections, we would see the introduction of a new fragrance. So now now we are going to see with this collection the first lipstick and this is going to be Rouge Triomphe, very appropriately titled. I'm personally probably going to try it. I'll like go in store and see at least if it works with my coloring. I'm trying not to buy so much beauty this year. I haven't bought any which is kind of a huge record for me. I will make an exception with this. Apparently what they're going to be doing is they're going to eventually release 15 shades and while we're going to see this lipstick be 
dropped this fall. The other shades are gonna be released in 2015. And Celine does intend to expand into other categories of beauty. So while in my mind I was like, oh, is he going to Givenchy with this 60s Audrey Hepburn influence? No, honestly, I could be totally wrong and they announce it tomorrow that he's going to Givenchy, right? I don't think he's ready to leave the brand yet, but who knows? I do think there is a beauty aesthetic they are going to want to go for, and this is kind of the direction that Bernard Arnault has always wanted Celine to go into. Many of the brands under LVMH, many of them all have perfume lines, some of them have beauty lines, like think about like Dior, it's very successful. There is kind of this hope that in the realm of beauty, all of these luxury brands can tap into that market. And I think during this period where we're talking about the recession and the economy, this is a way for them to capture a broader audience without devaluing their brand. It's easier for more people to obtain a $60 lipstick, but they just would not consider spending $4,000 on a handbag. And I think LVMH looks at the success of Dior's beauty lines. LVMH also owns Sephora. So there's definitely potential for Celine to start its own beauty line, for it to be that cleaner Parisian style. But I think what they're gonna start out with is they wanna start out with the 60s, the vibes of Audrey Hepburn to Twiggy. I think that will be kind of the source of inspiration for this. And I think it will gradually expand. So that's why I think the emphasis of the 60s, obviously, and I know Celine has a really great makeup artist, Aaron DeMay. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but he does the makeup at Celine and he has a very edgy style. He does that sort of sleaze look very well. I did notice that this collection felt a little bit more conservative and elegant. So I don't know if we'll see rock and roll makeup. Definitely can see a new vision for makeup. I'm personally very curious and I'll definitely go and start to try on the new lipstick. So now in terms of my top five picks from this collection. So one piece I really liked was this leather jacket set with this leopard print at the top. Apparently this was a design that was taken from the archives, but to me it's also very Addy Slamon. Obviously this felt more of that 60s futuristic silhouette. And there were a lot of jackets like this, but I'm gonna pick this one because I think it's quintessential Eddie. The design comes from the archives. Just on the leopard print, I know we're all talking about the mob wife aesthetic, but to me this leopard print coat, could it be mob wife? Yeah, sure. But I think this coat gives me Jackie Kennedy. I think people think leopard print is like tacky, but I always think leopard print can be very elegant. This is something you can always take out if you want that kind of statement, very wearable. Leopard print can look rock and roll girlfriend. It can look Parisian, or I think it can look very Jackie Kennedy or Audrey Hepburn. To me, the cut of this gives me more like Jackie Kennedy vibes. If money were no object, I'd definitely consider this. So the next piece of ready to wear I just loved. Again, it's very classic Eddie, but also the cuts and the silhouettes, very 60s. But this tuxedo sequin dress, kind of cutesy in a way. I could picture Lisa from Blackpink to Kaya Gerber. I could picture them wearing that for an occasion. Throughout this collection, there was a lot of very embellished, very glitzy, very crystallized dresses throughout the collection. So you could really take your pick. There's a lot of halter tops. And then of course we had these Triumph bags, newer style iterations with longer top handle straps, as well as classic variations, as well as the Claude style. But I have to really give it to the exotics. Those are the ones that did it for me. There's something about croc and silver or alligator. I don't know what it is. Whatever exotic this is. I know Celine has been promoting their exotics more so recently and this is easily probably their most expensive product. I would love a mini Celine 16 and a lizard. That's my dream. It's not happening this year, guys. Maybe 2025. Just look like they had a lot of really gorgeous exotics in this collection. Celine is trying to promote this line of exotics during this economy. A lot of these brands are pushing to focus on their wealthiest of clientele. At the same time, they also want to give us lipsticks too. But I also just think while all of these brands are upping their prices, trying to follow suit with Chanel. I think there gets to a point where there's only so much people are willing to spend on a calfskin bag. I remember looking at the teen Conti bag, which was very comparable to the mini 16, but this was in calfskin versus exotics. If you're looking to splurge on something that is very, very special, very different, not everybody has this, definitely consider an exotic bag. While we're talking about handbags, I thought this oval shaped bag was very interesting. This never seen this before. Whatever this 
this sort of round buckle. Hopefully by the time I edit this video, more photos will be released. I would have to see this in person. I'm not recommending it, but I thought it was worth noting. But this was a collection that heavily focused on the Triomphe bag. Final thing that I'm most curious to check out in store is obviously the lipstick. So Celine has been doing these sorts of tetra octagonal these many sided caps as well as the candles are like this as well i actually do think the packaging of this looks quite nice i can easily see someone like lisa from blackpink putting this on and everyone going crazy over it this is definitely something i'll like check out in store and i'll just finish off with a very minor observation i don't really think i'm heavily critiquing here but it's just a very noticeable observation to me and while overall i really enjoyed this collection i think a lot of the themes tied in very well Bernard Arnault's full vision of this brand is coming to life with every way that it's expanding in different directions. Taking on beauty is such an ambitious project. Beauty is a very competitive industry, but at the same time, there is a potential vision for what Celine could deliver to the market. And I think it would actually do really well in Asia with not just women, but also men, if they do it right. Eddie is here for some time for that reason. And it is very clear to me they want to expand their offering there's a little piece of luxury for almost everyone these business moves are very thought out they're very calculated but i guess my overall observation maybe it's just less of a critique and just more of a personal preference but this show just doesn't have the same energy and maybe it's just because it's a very highly edited film there's no live runway there was no obscure up-and-coming indie band that did the soundtrack while he's had several of these films the narrative and theme and i've really enjoyed many of them there was something very put together about this collection. You can tell they're going for a very elegant, polished, more refined customer. We don't have that same energy of a young Kate Moss or a young Jane Birkin here. This is definitely more Audrey Hepburn, which I actually think using Audrey Hepburn as a reference point is actually working here. But my total personal preference here, just as a cringe former indie girl that always loved how each of his collections, they didn't just have a vibe, but they had a very clear sound. This collection wasn't like the music in this collection was bad. It was just this twinkling music box soundtrack that really seemed more appropriate for current day Dior to me. And then when you pair that with the energy of this being a very well edited, show. I guess I just miss that rawness, that rebellious edge that music actually brings to his work. That is so much of his identity. And again, as I've stated, I am understanding of these business moves that they need to make with them wanting to tap into a broader audience, a broader customer base. This observation is just purely a personal preference. And I actually know a lot of people really did enjoy this new direction. They really enjoyed the elegance, the refinement, the maturity of this collection. Ultimately and understandably, LVMH wants growth. They want to expand into different markets. They want to create something that is is more palatable. I think overall Audrey Hepburn is more palatable than boho Jane Birkin. Yet, ironically, I think that kind of Jane Birkin energy is kind of what's trending in fashion right now, and I actually think that's where fashion is gonna go. But I guess just ultimately, I hope Eddie Saman doesn't lose that edge, doesn't lose his sound. That's what makes this era Celine by Eddie Slaman. And I think why it's been so successful, he could be this blend of a kind of like Parisian nonchalance with that edge, with that elegance. Whereas I think this is just kind of going in a direction that feels a little bit too current day Dior for me. That's just my very minor observation. I do like a lot, again, about this collection, but I just don't want Eddie to lose his edge. That is my video. Thank you so much for joining me in another one, and I hope to see you in the next one.